dive into the biggest topic of the last 24 hours. That would be SEC has decided, the Southeastern Conference, has decided to go conference only for the 2020 football season. They are doing 10 games. There will be zero non-conference games. That means there is no South Carolina Clemson. There is no Florida Florida State. Mike C. jumps in and said, what's up? Yeah, by the way, we're a little early today. We've got things going on this afternoon that we have to take care of, so we won't be able to go live then. The Brown Yeti jumps in. Hey, it's been a little while since we've seen him. He said, what's up, guys? So, yeah, if you want to jump in the chat, help drive the conversation, go ahead and knock it out. Uh, So, the SEC decides no non-conference games. That means no ACC-SEC rivalries. That means no LSU-Texas. That means none of the other stuff, right? Alabama-USC was already canceled because of the ACC's decision. Uh, We were not going to get Auburn, North Carolina, etc., so, Chris, what I wanted to do today, there's a, an interesting article over at SaturdayDownSouth.com. Now, I, I love these guys. Connor O'Gara, uh, fantastic writer. He has come up with five things that he likes about this and five things that he doesn't. So, I kind of want to go through the list. Um, so, first things first, Chris, the first thing he says is, hello, more SEC games. Obviously, that's a, that's a positive, right? Like, I, I think I'm happy with getting rid of cupcakes and getting to watch SEC football uh, as many weekends as we can. Do you agree with that? 100%. 100%. All right. Um, here's the other thing that he likes, and we don't know that this is going to happen right now. They haven't decided. I He said, I sort of don't hate the idea of blowing up divisions in this weird year. Would you rather have a winner of the East and winner of the West or just have the two best teams? I, I don't know the reason for that. I don't know why we would have just the two best teams, not opposed to it. I just don't know the logic behind it when you're not going to play each other. It's, I don't know. I just. <laughs> the reason I'm saying this, so, you know, I'm imagining that they are going to do the same thing as the ACC, which would be a winning percentage, right? Because you but don't know. Uh, go ahead. The, the reason the ACC is doing that is because they now have 15 teams. Agreed. Agreed. But it, even though the, the SEC still has seven and seven, uh, you are still going to be so playing. So you're thinking as if a team doesn't play the same amount of games. Right. I don't know. I don't I would Because it's so hard to win in the SEC consistently, you play a lesser amount of games but have a higher winning percentage. I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, it's so because we're just assuming that that of that third that extra game you miss is a push. Yeah, that's a good point. And I don't if it's a loss it changes everything. And I don't like that at all. I'm hoping that they do what the Big 10 is discussing with going divisions early. That's all the the rumors that we had heard early on. Um yeah. I mean, I, that, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, Mike said, do you think this will change college football scheduling for the future now that they prove they can change schedules instantly? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, my goodness. I, I, I really hate the contracts of LSU's going to play Oregon in 2035. Yeah. And I'm thinking, <laughs> holy shit, who cares? Yeah, exactly. No, who like, cares? The player that's going to play in that game isn't alive yet. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, Ben jumped in and said, RIP to A&M's easy schedule. Yeah. 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 I was, I was kind of, I had a, had a lot of money ready to be booked on A&M's over whenever we ever got a schedule. Um, that, that, that might go away. So, I mean, who, who knows at this point? Um, number three on this was, uh, yes, I actually think this could strengthen the SEC's brand. Uh, remember, the SEC has got that 2.30 Central Time window on CBS along with all of the national coverage from ESPN, etc. Uh, you are going to see the best football in the country played in this conference. I mean, you see it every year anyway, but... I just hate that yeah. we're the last to get started. That I, infuriates yeah. me. Yeah. I we're going to sit around for four weeks and watch four other conferences, lesser football, and it's I'm not a fan. I am convinced that
that this was set up by these Power but, Five conferences. So, but that doesn't make sense, Gary, because that means by time the SEC is put. What did the SEC benefit from being last? Well, I'll, and I'll not tell you playing this. those four weeks and having the Big Ten get four weeks on you, or the Big Twelve get four weeks on you. I don't think that they're going to get four weeks on you. I think that they are. All of these conferences are convinced that you might be able to get started, and you may not be able to finish. That's, right, that's so what I think they're the doing. Big 12 starts, and then they realize they can't finish, and this is a disaster, and the SEC never gets started now. Now, you, you've got a valid point there. I'm looking at it more along the lines of, okay, that, now, what I don't like is that they, they are letting kids get back on campus, and they want to get that first wave over with when kids get back in late August, and then they want to talk about bringing kids into play, you know, September 26th. I don't, I don't really understand why they would do that, but I, part of me kind of gets the idea, at least for television networks and whatnot, of all five power conferences starting on different weeks. That way you at least get the opening week, and then you'll just see where you can fit in stuff later on. But I think it that helps would their make sense inventory. If the other conferences aren't playing the week that the other conferences start. But by the time yeah. we start... All five conferences will be playing. Agreed. Now, what I what I don't understand is why in the world and that means by you... week two. So week two, we're going to get Big Ten football and Big Twelve football and nothing else. And then week and three, then week three, we're going to add the ACC. Pack, well, pack, pack. Oh yeah, I guess no, no, no. Week two, whatever, whoever, whoever's starting, for, it doesn't matter. At we're opening weekend, we're going to get one conference. Yeah, like week zero, we will but, get so, Oklahoma so that, and that means we're Kansas we're gonna get five games. Yeah, pretty much. That's insane. Why? Well, I I, I think that we're gonna have G five teams. Sixty something teams. Let's let them play. Uh, Damian said, "What's up?" He jumps in on YouTube. Will Gomez said, "Need kids at campus to say it's safe for the kids to be in groups and then have them play." Uh, it, you think this is maybe a liability thing? No, I don't think so either. Uh, but, all right, so number four. It I don't says, think these people give a damn about liability. I don't think so either. Well, I mean, they, they were getting kids to sign waivers and whatnot. I mean, they, that, they scrapped Once that, they have but, the waiver, they no longer need anything for liability. Oh, yeah, but they, they ended up scrapping all those waivers. So it doesn't matter. They know the kids will sign them, so they just yeah. can bring them back. Uh, number four, do you really think the SEC is getting left out of the playoff? Uh, he said, I don't, not in a year where there are fewer data points than ever. Um, I will say this. I don't think that we are going to have a single undefeated team in the SEC this year. Now, I do think that we are going to get an SEC team in the playoff if we end up having the playoff. 100%. But, I mean, it, I think it's more likely that the SEC champion has two losses as opposed to one. They still get in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They still get in. Ben said, has the G5 canceled or are they doing conference only two? None of them has announced yet. Uh they were waiting for all the the big dogs. The Big Twelve has not said that they are going conference only yet. Like as it stands right now, Oklahoma is playing Missouri State out of the FCS, which is Bobby Petrino's team, by the way. Uh, and then they Kansas is playing Southern Illinois. So that's the plan for Week Zero. Who knows, right? G five schools are going to be clamoring to get Big Twelve deals so that they can make that money. Like Kent State, they lost. Uh, a game against Kentucky, a game against Alabama, and a game against Penn State, and it cost them over $5 million this year. That is 17% of their revenue. Like, that's a that's, lot of dough. That's a lot of money. So A lot of money. Mike said, uh, being an Ohio State fan, there's no way the SEC gets left out. I believe Big 12 or Pac-12 gets left out. Yeah, that's that's what it's been basically every year. Uh, I think everybody just kind of understands, right? Um, all right, so what he said here, number five, the SEC is letting everyone else figure this out first. Lost in the shuffle of the 10-game conference-only schedule is the fact the SEC will not play until September 26th. That is four weeks after Oklahoma is scheduled to play Missouri State. The ACC, on the other hand, is expected to start the week after Labor Day. Uh, Commissioner Sankey said throughout this process, the goal has always been to gather as much information as possible before making these decisions. The SEC did not push to have games played in August. The situation is very fluid. The unknown of how this virus will spread when, if, students get to campus is one thing but so is seeing how this thing is handled when players are actually in full contact at practice. A September 26th start gives the SEC time, which is something that it was lacking before making this decision. So, it still doesn't really fully explain why you would go 
September 26th. I understand. Like, what they said yesterday, so Sankey was on with Feinbaum, and you had all these other guys that are in the know, apparently. But they all discussed that they wanted to gather as much information as possible, and they wanted to make sure that they could get in a full season as opposed to starting really quickly and then having to stop. Now, the other side of this is, by September 26th, I mean, that's two months away, are we really going to be in a much better situation than we are right now? Like, nope. that's that's what I'm curious about. Is And we're not going to know any more information either, by the way. Yeah, that's that's the issue. Like, we're not going to get a, a, what's it, a vaccine by then. So, I... <laughs> I don't know. The Brown Yeti jumps in. He said, if the best SEC team has two losses, they will still be one of the top two seeds. Yeah, I think so. Uh, And then Ben said, this will be a good year to add playoff teams. Honestly, every other league is trying new things. CFB should too. Yes. uh, We we completely agree with that as well. I I think this should be an eight-team playoff this year. Double double it up. Yeah, and that way you are sure that you've got the right teams in. Like, that's... That's all you want out of this thing anyway, right? If you're going to have no non-conference games, but you can have a playoff, toss eight of them in there. Like, you're probably not going to get bowl games anyway. So put eight of them in and see which four are the best, and then you can work from there. Uh, Matt Miller said, man, you boys starting early today. Gary, are you day drinking? No, I've <laughs> no I'm not, actually. Uh, I am actually in the middle of work, but... Uh, Got a lot of stuff to handle this afternoon, and, you know, Chris was nice enough to go ahead and do this with me early. So, uh, here are the don't likes that he said. Goodbye, traditional non-conference rivalries. So, these dates are going to blow your mind, by the way. Uh, The last time that we had a college football season without Florida, Florida State was 1957. The last time we did not have Louisville and Kentucky was 1993. The last time we did not have Georgia, Georgia Tech... Good old-fashioned hate, 1924, and then check this crap out. Clemson and South Carolina have played every single year since 1908. That is pretty unbelievable. So, yeah, I was I was surprised. So that sucks that we're not going to get that. But uh, it also sucks that we're not going to get LSU Texas, and we're not going to get Tennessee Oklahoma, and we're not getting Alabama USC. And None of getting, those things suck if you don't have fans. I, agreed. It's still fun to watch the matchups no, regardless. But no, it's not. No, it's not. It doesn't It doesn't take care of your home and home. It do, It just totally no, but changes I'm, the game. I'm not worried about the, the home and home and all that. I'm just talking about the matchup. I would hope that they but, would, if they had the game this year, which I'm betting is a large reason why they're doing conference only right now. The, um, the atmosphere for those games is a big deal. It's a big deal to the home team. And the home team missing out on that advantage is huge. Oh, yes. Absolutely huge. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Will Gomez said, uh, as uh, asked still to get how the kids are going to social distance in class, my class has usually had 120 or 130 people. Um, This is not going to happen in college. No. no. I will will tell you this. Uh, Where I work, they are – cutting the class sizes down to like a third, and they're going to go hybrid. So some days, some kids get to go, and some days, other kids get to go. And in the meantime, they're doing it virtually, and, I mean, we'll see what happens. So, I mean, who who knows? They're not going to be able to socially distance in those classrooms, so we'll just have to go from there. Matt Miller said... I had a large section of my classrooms, so this is 15 years ago, where I was in Oxford, the professor was in South Haven and they had classes in two other sections, satellite schools of, of Mississippi. Okay. Yeah. And, and one professor got up, gave lectures and there was a camera set up. It was live streaming it. The other kids could push a little button on the microphone in front of them and talk to him. He could talk back. It, it was, it was very easy, very seamless. That was 15 years ago, technology. And we were still doing it. If you want to tell the kids, keep your ass at home, and the professor is still going to show up and do the lecture, we have that technology, and that's pretty freaking easy. Yeah. Uh, Matt said, for my school, we have to have temperature checks every time we walk in a new building and wear a mask in public. Yeah, that's that's going to continue. That's going to continue. Uh, Damien said, those waivers don't mean a damn thing other than saying they really don't give a damn about these students. 
Um, it doesn't matter because they're not doing them anymore anyway. Uh, we'll but they've already with, signed a bunch of teams already signed them, and that's yeah, fine. but the, the the colleges admitted they were throwing them out because they, for whatever reason, I don't know. Because they were super unethical. Yeah, big, I mean, big time. Yeah, I mean, it's that's I mean, that's what we said the, the day we talked about it. Just ridiculously unethical. Yeah. No, we we weren't fully against it, but no, because I was it was fully cover against the, them signing a waiver. I, I wouldn't have signed a waiver. I want yeah, to play. No, I agree. Yes. And I'd have showed up every day to practice, but I ain't signing that piece of paper. Agreed. And if because, I'm great, you're going to let me on that field. Yeah, because at that point, uh, they don't have to take care of you if something goes wrong. Like That's right. That's that's why that. I wouldn't have signed it. Uh, Will said, are they going to quarantine the Georgia Bulldog? <laughs> you You did see that there was a, a dog that got uh, that got COVID, like, mm. last week. I did not realize they could do that. that. I don't know that. I, I need to see more signs because we pretty much had definitive signs and said the dogs can't get it. But uh, but tigers could, right? When that, what, like felines uh, that could? That one tiger did get it, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows? Who knows? The Brown Yeti said, uh, I didn't know we were calling 2020 a year. I thought it was just going to be known as the mess of 2020. Yeah, that's kind of what this has turned into. And Alonzo Chico jumps in. He said, go Gators. Hey, cheers to you, brother. Cheers to you. Go Gators. Uh, Matt Miller said, first dog dies of COVID yesterday, but it was a different strain, I think. Yeah, there's like six strains of this shit now. I mean, it's unbelievable. Anyway, all right. So, no LSU in Texas. No Oklahoma, Tennessee. So, obviously, no non-conference matchups. Number three that Connor does not like was evaluating rebuilding programs is going to be awful. Can you imagine how much it must suck to be Vanderbilt and Arkansas and, I mean, Missouri could be okay, maybe. Um, Vanderbilt's bad. Arkansas's in a complete year zero anyway. Oh, like, yeah. You weren't going to gauge them on anything this year to begin with. Well, But at least you could have a couple of non-conference wins against nobody. Oh, oh, that to, makes you feel good? Uh, for, bring, for those players, bring, at least getting bring in, on W. You know, the penal farm and kick the shit out of those guys. And that, that gives us a, a win in the win column boys. Like, but it, come on. it gives you something. Everybody knows that's bullshit. Uh, yes. But the players at least have something that they can point to, to work better at. Right. Oh. Like at least you, because we've talked about this when we were previewing like rice last year and, and all UT, those players uh, aren't going to be there. So they don't need anything to look back at. Yeah. Yeah. You might be right. You might be right. So, um, Matt Bennett jumps in, said Clemson and South Carolina both need to be in the same conference. Florida needs to be with Miami and Florida State. Some of these conferences need to be broken down and changed. Hey, you are preaching to the choir. We have talked about regional conferences on this on this show for a long, long if time. If we just could bring Florida State and Clemson back into the SEC, would be great. We got a sixteen team power conference, and we'd win the national championship every year. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you might have a year here and there where Ohio State would jump in, but it, that'd be about the only other competition. Um, no, nope. and I'd be all right with that. But it, it, this is all political. The SEC stuff is all political. It's so stupid. Oh yeah, no. I like that. You're like, nope, nope. <laughs> uh, Matt Miller asked if any coach gets fired at the end of this year. I don't think there's I, a chance. I, I think, I think it's gonna happen. It won't be because of wins and losses. It'll be because of negligent somewhere somehow. They covered up a fact that a kid was sick, and they let him play anyway. And the and it got leaked out or something. That somebody's gonna get fired because somebody's gonna play fast and loose with rules, and and we're gonna string them up for it. That would be about the only way because at that point you don't have to pay them. That's right because right. it's gonna be for cause. And yeah. and I think I absolutely think somebody's going to do something stupid. Because what these coaches do outside, listen, these guys are geniuses with football. Okay. They have some of the best offensive and defensive mind. They understand the game better than I'll ever understand it. Outside of football, they're as close to a Neanderthal as you could possibly be. These guys are <laughs> knuckle draggers and they're idiots. Okay. We shouldn't yeah. let them make any decisions whatsoever outside of football decisions. If you think just because he's a great football coach, oh, look how great of a leader he is. He would be a fantastic general. He'd be a great CEO of a company. That's bullshit. I've met a lot of these guys. That's just not true. <laughs> Matt Miller said, so uh, So someone's going to pull a Marlins? Yeah, probably. probably. Listen, man, we're going to look back, and if the Marlins have this big wave go through them and they get out early, 
and they end up every team is going to make the damn playoffs anyway, and they get in the playoffs and they're healthy and they make a run, they win the World Series, you're all going to look stupid. Yeah, you you might be right. I mean, remember they, they got went that LSU one. Clemson mentality. Hey, they, let everybody get it right now. Come on, and then go. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the Marlins did go two and one against the Phillies. I'm just saying, I'm telling you. So now, so now, all they got to do is get healthy, get back. It's done. Ran its course through them. They just rolled through the majors. You got that right. You got that right. Number four on his do not like list is the weird way we're going to have to look back on this for stats, records, etc. It said get ready for win percentage to become a big thing in 2020. Uh, nobody is going to want to talk about the cumulative number of wins. Even the contenders will only be eight and two. If you're someone like Will Muschamp or Derek Mason, how do you show improvement in a year like this to save your job? I imagine those would be difficult conversations for an athletic director to have at the season's end. Firing a coach might be even more challenging. Um, I will I will say this. Um, you know, I, <laughs> this this one thing says maybe we'll see a two and eight season from someone who annually reaches the postseason. Uh, I I don't know that anybody that will shocking. get fired for losing this season. Yeah, like that's I just think not this would be a really hard one to do. Um, that that doesn't make any sense to me. And the stats things don't make any sense to me. Like, I, I don't, I just don't, I just don't get that you think this is going to throw off somebody's win percentage. They're basically not going to have two or three pay for wins. Okay. Yeah. They, they shouldn't have those anyway. Agreed. It, you, what you need to be looking at is record against power or conference record anyway. Yeah. Because, yeah. because if you go six and six, all right, but three of those were high school teams. Well, and, then, and, but you were two and six in the conference. But you, but yeah, but no, you three and whatever in the conference, and so you go to a bowl game because you beat three teams, two of which were the two worst teams in the conference, and then you upset somebody, and then you beat a couple of high school teams, and congratulations, you get to go to a bowl game. Like that's kind of laughable to begin with. Oh yeah, oh I I agree with you. So I I think basically what this does is uh it it helps reveal the flaws, I guess. Because right. everybody, and I don't think Muschamp's getting fired. I don't think Vanderbilt's getting fired after this year. I think this is this is a tough season to do that with. Um, and also, like Muschamp's situation, he he told him this was not a Rona money. thing. He gave back a lot of money to make sure to help pay his so his staff didn't have to take a pay cut. So he took the standard pay cut that you know to help save the school some money, and then he took an extra pay cut to make sure his staff didn't have to and they could be paid. It, that's a big deal. If you're an athletic director, you're South Carolina, you, you're not a, you know, you're not used to, you're used to going bowling. Okay. Yeah. That's about the level of, of expectation you've got at South Carolina. I'm going to tell you, man, I'd be, it'd be real hard for me to fire that coach. I'd, I'd say you got, you got one more year, but because of your loyalty to your staff and to the school, you, you can't just turn away that. To wins and losses. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen this year. Um, now, if LSU and, and Georgia and some of these bigger schools, it's tough to justify that. But you you know how I feel about that anyway. I just don't think it's anybody's birthright to just get ten wins a year in the first year. You lose nine. You know, you 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 lose three or four games, and you don't get to that double digit win column. You fire the coach. I think that's ridiculous to begin with. I think I think Coach O is is life or status right now at LSU. Like, uh, I yeah, think but I just, but it. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, mean, I know, I know. I just so. think, I just think some of these schools have an expectation that's absurd and irresponsible. It's it's kind of ridiculous. You get that ring, you get that trophy, and it's it's basically your get out of jail free card for a long, long time. Like it, if Coach O goes eight and five, that well, whatever the number would be, yeah. Say he goes eight and five next year, seven and five or whatever, he's still fine. It, you do that same thing with Kirby Smart, yeah. Mm, we might be having a different conversation. I mean, so, you say that, but less one one and made it to another one, and you know he he won nine games two years back to back, and he was gone. Well, it, hey, and to be fair, like Gene Chizik won Auburn one, but you know, and they want him gone every year. Well, no, Gene Chizik. I mean, they got him going after after the second year. Oh, well, Gene did. Well, yeah. yeah. All right, Gene's so. Gene's championship. I, I was thinking of Gus. Gene's yeah. championship was fraudulent to begin with. Completely fraudulent. Oh, 100%. That Gene had nothing to do with that. That was Gus Malzahn, Cam Newton. Oh, 100%. 100%.
Gene, um, Gene could have been me or you, and we win those national championships. Oh, 100%. Over and over and over again. Yeah. Ben, by the way, wanted to jump in and tell you that uh, that your socks are pitiful this year, Chris. Just wanted to throw hey, that out there. we just beat the Mets two in a row. <laughs> Will Gomez you're, said... You're, uh, you're, you're way too early MVP candidate right now. Christian Vasquez <laughs> is a Red Sox, baby. <laughs> they, they're really trying to mess with you the last couple of days. That's okay. I don't know That's what okay. this is about. You're not going to get it by me. As I'm, I'm swearing to you, I did not tell them to jump in here and get on you when you came back. I promise. That's okay. Uh, I forget. It's all right. I like, hey, we have fun. It's all hey, right. You got that right. We'll, uh, we'll go well. Said Phillies might fire their coach by September. Uh, the Brown Yeti said, so are they adding games to this current uh, to the current schedule or blowing it up and starting over? Well, we don't know. Uh, but we let's, don't know. Let's get back to that. Ben said uh, the Mets bullpen might as well be a bunch of Little League dads. Um, <laughs> yes, hey, the Red Sox could say the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the Brown Yeti. pitching's so, terrible. Back to what the Brown Yeti said. So, are they adding games to the current schedule or blowing it up and starting over? We have no, no idea. If um, they get away, if they do away with divisions, then they're going to blow the whole thing up. Obviously, if but if they keep divisions, then they are then going just to gonna add two games. Well, they're they're going to add two games, but they are going to wipe the slate clean and restructure it. Uh, more than likely, putting division games early. Oh, yes. And oh, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't have a schedule now anyway. So the, the SEC oh, early opener, or late, what the schedule was before the season started is gone in the garbage a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, like Alabama and Georgia will not be opening up against each other uh, on September 26th. Like that was the SEC opener but uh, for for both of those teams, but that's not going to happen now. So, I mean, who knows what they're going to end up but doing. But why not? Why wouldn't that be? Oh, because they want the divisional games. Right. So, I mean, we'll... Obviously, if they if they nix divisions, I mean, go ahead and give us LSU, Auburn, and Alabama, Georgia, no, 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 and yeah. Florida, and Texas A and M, and you know, give us all the the yeah. big ones early, and then you know we'll do whatever. But uh, if there's if we still have divisions, I would imagine that we'll go the other direction. I would um, stick with divisions because I just don't understand the reason not to. Um, and if we didn't start so damn late then we'd have more than enough time throughout the season to get everybody 10 games in. Yeah. Because you're virtually trying to get 10 games in 15, 16 weeks, but now you're cutting off four weeks that you can play football. Well, and then they're pushing the SEC championship game back to, I think, December 19th. So, But, but you're losing those weeks to where if something does happen, you need to pull a team out of rotation for a week or two. Then, you're, yeah, then you're, you lose the, all the flexibility because you gave it away on the front end. You're you're likely going to, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. You you're giving away all the flexibility at the beginning. Yes, that's stupid. That's this is where Sankey is wrong. This is where the presidents and the ads are. They're just wrong. You don't want to give away all your flexibility in the front end. If you've got to pull Alabama out for two weeks, you, you can't make those games up later because you don't have any time. Yeah, yeah. You're but if you start out. when everybody else is starting. Then you've got time to say you don't play for two weeks, so somebody gets a bye week, another team gets a bye week, and then we fill them in at the back end because you got all this time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Matt Miller said division should not be a thing anyway. Uh, just have the best two teams every year in the championship game. Every conference has one good and one bad. Also, the season should start August 29th. And he said, I shouldn't say bad, but no conference has equal divisions. And that's true. Um, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, true, definitely true. true. Uh, Damien, I mean, the SEC West, has, I mean, we're, we're homers. We understand this. Oh, we yes. get the bias. But nobody can argue the fact that the SEC West is not the strongest conference in all of football. Agreed. Agreed. And, I mean, it's better if you took just the SEC West, it's better than the top seven teams from top to bottom of some conferences. Yeah. No, you're, you're 100% right about that. Uh, the last one that he said that he doesn't like, it's still less football. He said, last I checked, 10 is less than 12. I'm excited for more conference games, but those precious college football weekends will be fewer in 2020, and that was inevitable. So, yeah, we don't like that, but look, at this point, anything that I can to give get, up anything to make sure we get football. Yes. I'm going to be pissed off if the first four conferences get started and something crazy happens with this damn virus and we never get started. Now you, uh, you Or we are... get one weekend when we could have gotten five weeks in. Then yeah. I'm going to want to head to roll. Yeah, and I think it will. I think it will. Oh, I don't. You think Sankey would be fired for that? I don't. It may not be Sankey that, that gets it, but, I mean, it could but be. But that's who should. He's the one responsible. He's the commissioner. 
No, this, he's the commissioner, but this was voted on by presidents. Com- I understand like, that. Sankey, you don't think he? You don't think those presidents are going off information that he's given them? No, I think they're going based off of the information. That Roger the Goodell is the commissioner of the NFL. He works for the owners, but he guides the owners. That's the whole purpose of the commissioner. Okay. You all have a boss that's a board, but one man has to make these decisions. Okay, one man has to guide this ship. And I guarantee you, if he said we need to start early so we have flexibility to finish no matter what hits us, then they would have done what he advised. Are you? Yeah. Or I need him to publicly come out and disagree with the presidents. That's it. That's it. Uh, One or the other, right? One One or the other. One or the other. You need to say. I wasn't for waiting this long because I like the flexibility starting early gives us. Uh, I don't want to hear this. I want to see what happens once everybody gets back to campus. Cause that means if what happens comes back that when everybody gets back to campus that we think is going to happen, what does that mean? We're not going to have football because we all kind of have an understanding what the hell is going to happen when everybody gets back to campus. It's just going to blow the hell up. Yeah. I, I think it's better to keep the kids off campus. But I agree. But either way, 